Now that the infrastructure is in place, we can start building our domain model. So we'll go to the root command line again. We'll say entity. Class is going to be, we'll use the shortcut for the top level package, domain dot artist. That'll be our top level entity. So now we're focused on the artist entity. We'll go ahead and add a field to that. Field. Uh, we'll make that a string field. And the required field name, we'll just say name. And we'll give it a constraint of not null. You can see Roo's been working in the background here on our artist entity. We'll go ahead and open up that file. You can see it's uh, just a basic Java class with the uh, string name field and uh, JSR 303 not null constraint added to that field. Uh, now that we've got this basic entity in place, we can go ahead and create some flex UI scaffolding for it. So we'll open up the command line shell again. We'll say flex. And there's a, a couple of variations of the uh, commands for generating the scaffolding. There's flex remoting all, which will generate flex scaffolding for every uh, entity it finds in your in your domain. And then there's flex remoting scaffold, which allows you to just generate the scaffolding for a single entity. In this case, just to make it simple, we'll do uh, flex remoting all. That requires just that you specify the package for where you want the uh, remoting destination classes that it generates to, to live. Those are basically uh, Spring services, so we'll just call the package uh, dot .service. You see Roo did some work in the background there. Let's take a look at what it created. So. Uh, first is the artist service. So you can see that this is just a, a Spring service, annotated class, with the annotated Spring Blaze DS uh, at remoting destination. And then here's the Roo specific annotation. There's only uh, source time only retention, the Roo flex scaffold. This is what the add on uses. Uh, as the trigger for generating everything else. Uh, of course, you notice there's no actual methods in here. Where those live is, uh, as with the other Roo add-ons, is in the actual aspect J intertype declaration. Here you can see we've got the actual basic persistence methods that get exposed uh, as part of the, the remoting destination. You can see that Roo also created some action script and MXML files there in the background as a result of that command, so let's take a quick look at those. We'll switch over to the Flash Builder perspective and open up this artist.actionscript class. You can see that that mirrors what we created in the Java class, so we've got that uh, name field that's a string. We've also got the ID and version uh, to satisfy JPA. The MXML artifacts that were created are in this presentation.artist package. So you can see there were a couple of uh, MXML view classes that were created here. There's the artist view.mxml and artist form.mxml. We'll open up the view and you'll see this is basically just a uh, view for listing the entities. It also gives you access to the the creating a new artist and uh, edit and delete functionality as well. And then the form is based on the fields that are available in the artist entity. Uh, we don't include the ID and version. We hide those, but we do show the name field. And this is for actually editing or creating new uh, artist entities. If you look at the source code behind this, you'll notice that beyond just generating the actual fields, we also generate validators for each one of those fields uh, based on the actual JSR 303 uh, constraints that were specified when you created the field in the Java class. So in this case, we created a not null constraint, so we added a validator that uh, has required equals true on that field. Now once the link has been established between the ActionScript entity and the Java entity by using the flex remoting command, Roo will of course continue to manage all of these artifacts as you make changes to the domain model. So for example, we can go back to the Roo shell and we can start adding new fields to our artist entity. So we'll say field number uh, we'll give it a type, and we'll say this is going to be an integer, and field name, uh, we'll call this number of members in the band, for example, and we'll also give this a not null constraint, and 
We'll also add a constraint, uh, a new one. The, we'll say the minimum value for that integer can actually be uh, 1. So now you see Ruse doing some additional work in the background there. Um, if we take a look at our artist class, we see that that number of members has been added to the Java class. It's also been added to the ActionScript class. And it's been added to the uh, form and the, the view, the list view for uh, artists as well. So you'll see in the source here, we've got a, a, a new validator as well. And if we look in the design view, we can see that new uh, field added to the actual form. Now, one of the most unique and interesting things about Roo as compared to other code generation tools is that it actually lets you edit the code that's been generated and responds accordingly. So, for example, we can go into our artist action script class and we can add a new field. We can say public ver uh, home city. Make that a string and Roo will respond accordingly to that. You can see in the background the uh, home city has been added as a field to the Java class and it's also been added to our form as appropriate. Now before we fire up and deploy this app for the first time let's go ahead and add one more entity to our domain model so that we can see how the flex add-on handles relationships. So we'll go back to the Roo command line and we'll say entity class we're going to call this one domain dot album and we'll go ahead and create that and now we'll go ahead and add a couple of fields so we'll say field uh, string field name we'll say title and that should be not null and now we'll add a date field so field date field name will be release date and type we'll just make that a java util date and one more we'll create a many to one relationship between album and artist Now let's go ahead and scaffold the album entity as well. Flex remoting scaffold. We gotta say in this case service dot album service. Of course I could also use the flex remoting all just as well and that would work fine. So now that we've got a basic domain and scaffolding in place, let's go ahead and deploy the application and see what it looks like running. So we can go to Tomcat here, add the application, and go ahead and start that. So you can see Tomcat booting up the web application here. We've got the dispatcher servlet starting. All done, so now we can go ahead and run the Flex client. So I'll use the Flash Builder shortcut here, run as web application. It should open up the Flex client in the browser. So as you can see, the result of our scaffolding here is a, a basic Flex 4 app. So here on the left, we have our entity list. So I can go to the artist page. I can uh, create a new artist. So we'll say tool. That should be in all caps, actually. And number of members, there are four guys in Tool, and they're from Los Angeles. We'll save that. We'll add one more. Let's go ahead and say Metallica. Four guys in Metallica as well, and they are from uh, here in San Francisco. Save that one. So now let's go ahead and create an album. We'll say Lateralis. And of course that came out in 2001, but we're just going to ignore that fact for now. That's from Tool. And so there you go. So of course we can uh, delete entities as well. And we can edit things, say uh, Metallica for some mysterious reason decided to add a fifth member. So there you have it, a fully functional SpringFlex application generated by SpringRoo.